All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Thanks for checking us out, and thanks for coming back for all those returning. For all you new people, my name is Travis. I am the owner and operator of Red Tie Entertainment. We are a wedding DJ company located out of central Pennsylvania. In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through what you need to get started in becoming a multi-op DJ operation. So, if that interests you, stick around and check this out. All right, so let's get to it. So you're looking to become a multi-op, you're just a single op right now, meaning it's just you, you might have one assistant, but you only have one DJ operating right now and you're looking to expand, you're looking ahead and you want to have two, 10, 20 DJs underneath of you. <clears throat> so right off the bat, I think there's two ways to do this. One way is slower and one way is quicker. And just the reason why I want to start this video is because I haven't made a video in a while and it's because I've been organizing all of this paperwork here and expanding myself to become a multi-op and pursuing other DJs to bring on board for this 2021 wedding season, which we hope is a lot better than our 2020 wedding season. COVID screwed everything up but we're expecting to be really busy and we're looking in to capitalize on all the opportunities that we can, which is why I'm expanding to bring in multiple people. So I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna show you all the things that I have in place this far because currently I am a, uh, a single op. It's only me and I have an assistant. I recently hired two people, two DJs, um, and that is because at every one of our shows we have two people there. This is going to help out with customer service so we can go above and beyond and offer more than what our competition would with having two staff DJs at any event. Right, so that's a little bit about me and that's why I'm gonna be going over this video. So hopefully we can stick around with my process and my company as I grow throughout the years um, and I can help share some of this insight that I learned and I can show you how I've done it. So first and foremost, getting back to it, I believe there's two ways to do this. One way is to either go the 1099 route or the W-2 route. Now, what does that mean? 1099 are subcontractors. So what this means is that you might get shows, you might already do this. <clears throat> you might have someone inquire to you and you're already booked on a specific date and you can just give this show to uh, a friend of yours, an associate, a DJ that you trust that you might have worked out a deal with where they give you a percentage of that money for finding, having a finder's fee for finding that client first. So you might do something like that. <clears throat> That's not the route that I'm going. I'm going down the W-2 route. Um, and what this means is basically I'm actually going to be hiring the employees. They're gonna get a W-2 at the end of the year, they're going to be on our, our payroll, the red tie payroll. Um, and there's some advantages and disadvantages to both of these. So first, with the 1099 route, right? So this is going to be the easier and quicker way to build up more gigs, maybe build up more money. Because right away, you don't have to put up all this capital and all this money into buying multiple um equipment packages so you don't have to have these the equipment on hand to give to somebody for them to do the show you're just lending the client out to your your associate for them to do the wedding for them to give you the money right you don't have a lot of consistency right um you're giving it out to another company 
So even though they're looking for, we'll say me, say they're looking for red tire entertainment and I give it out to another company, they're gonna be getting that other company's service. So I'm just not gonna have any control over the consistency of the performance, the show, um, make sure there's a structure because that's what I really want. I want it to be consistent. If you're getting red tire entertainment, you are going to be getting a red tie DJ and you're gonna be having a red tie wedding. I don't like the inconsistencies with having just to pawn it out. Then like my reputation could be on the line with giving it to somebody else. Like what does that client, what are they gonna think of this other DJ? Did they do a good job? And will that reflect badly upon me for uh, referring them out? Right, so those are some things that I think about. Those are some negatives with the 1099. And the positives would have just been, um, I can get more money, we can do more shows throughout the year. So moving on to the W2 way, which is the way that I'm going to be doing it. It gives you a lot more control, but you need more capital up front to get started. So W2, it's just like an employee, or <clears throat> it's just like you're, they're an employee of the company. Right, so I am hiring them, they're on the payroll, and they get a W-2 at the end of the year. What this allows me to do is to make them specific to Red Tie Entertainment. I'll go over some of this paperwork, um, and this is in here, but there, there will be like a non-compete. So this way, you can train people and tell them everything about the company and, don't ha and not have any fear about whether they take what you know and go start their own company or give it to um, a competitor of yours. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. They're gonna be a red tie. They're gonna be a DJ specific to your company. So first off, I love that part. Um, I like the consistency and the control over if a client is coming to me and I supply them with one of our DJs that I know exactly the equipment they're using, the package they're getting, the personality of the DJ, and I know that the final product of the performance is exactly in line with what I hold to our standards. Um, so <clears throat> those are the two different types of routes to go to become a, a multi-op and just to touch on the capital part so you with the w2 you might get lucky and find somebody that has their own equipment that wants to join your ship your team and you would just compensate them more for having more equipment than it takes a liability off of you and a lot of capital up front off of you that they have the equipment rather than me having to supply it so but if you didn't, like me, like I don't, the one guy uh, I'm hiring has some equipment, but mainly I'm already projecting, I don't really know how many equipment sets I want to have, but I definitely am gonna need one. So I've already started building up one. And just for reference, this is going to be our fourth year. 2021 is gonna be our fourth year in business. So I already have, I have one full setup and I have about 90% of a second setup. And now we could talk a lot about, oh, how do you do that? Do you, how do you acquire capital, you know? Um, for me, nothing, everything I've gotten was built from the ground up. I've taken no loans, not gotten any money. The reason that I'm able to grow at the rate that I am is because up till now I have worked another job. So I've been working two jobs and all of the money that I make out of the DJ business goes right back into it. So I'm able to scale it. So then when I want to quit my other job, that my DJ business is already generating a lot of revenue that I'm able to live off of and we can continue to grow. I have no idea how people start a business and then just live off of that like starting a business and you have to live off the money and also feed the business to grow i don't know how they do that but <clears throat> i'm at a point now where i am looking to scale back on my full-time job and pursuing this full-time so but hopefully all that made sense those are the two types of ways to become a multi-op so next we're gonna go over a little bit of paperwork that I have here that I just think it is important if you are going the W-2 route. Um, some of this is not going to make sense if you go the 1099 route because you don't have that control. You're literally just subbing out the job to somebody else. But say you're going the W-2 route. The first thing I have here, this is an employee handbook. This is super important 
to letting know letting your employees that you hire know a lot of stuff about your company so what's in the employee handbook that we have is basically a, like a stuff about the company our vision our mission statement the values that we hold our company to that and that i expect out of all of our employees goes over pay performance what social media how you're supposed to act on social media um harassment how not to harass people what we expect that is okay and not okay as an employee of red tie entertainment it goes over our process with the employee so that they know exactly our process of booking shows and being ready for shows and it just outlines all that stuff right on paper for the employees and I have them sign the last page on for them to saying that they understand all of the all of our values and procedures that go on at red tie entertainment <clears throat> so the important thing about that is this is then going to be creating our culture at our company right and so everybody knows expectations they know what's happening what they're allowed to do what they're not allowed to do there's no questions everything's cut and clear in a handbook that they're able to keep so this also helps keep people in line so then if they do misbehave or fall short in certain areas we can help catch them correct these measures and move forward meaning we have a disciplinary action process as well that we all form around our employee handbook of what's acceptable at our company so you need to make an employee handbook uh, you can find a million of these online it'll give you a basic structure but you want to make it specific to your company and your brand and your values right so when i hire somebody this is the first thing that we go over first thing next the next paper i have <clears throat> So what you want this is our training plan we have there's three pages here but we have it is an eight week training plan where it's broken up into two hour sessions we could do this four weeks in four hour sessions but i think two hours for eight weeks works well so obviously the important thing about this and being a w2 uh, multi-op company especially you want to have the structure you want them to be i want them to be able to do a wedding just as how i would do a wedding you know all the great reviews that we've gotten so far i want the client that's booking us to be able to get the same exact experience as if i were to do the wedding so this is where the training comes into play um, we go over our procedures um, a little bit about our process so that it's almost like game it's like practice right so we can practice how it's actually gonna be when they get assigned a real client um, it goes over scripts how to how to MC on the microphone um, a little bit about mixing I'm really looking for people that already know how to DJ so I don't have to train them in, to do that because if, if you're a DJ you know it's it took you a while before you're actually pretty good at DJing so to bring somebody in and then within eight weeks to expect them to be very skilled um, I don't think is realistic so I'm I'm really looking for people that already have mixing experience DJ experience before I start this process so mainly it's mic work you know um, and this whole training process this is like the rooting out process this is where I understand the type of person that they are like are they dependable are they showing up on time can they speak clearly um, are they energetic so this is like the rooting out process that they're not hired there's a pass or fail at the end of training so it gives me um, a little bit of leeway in hiring people where if I by the end of the eight weeks and I realize like hey this isn't gonna work out you know I'm not committed to anything they're not committed to anything and we do pay them for training as well so they make out that way as well so that's our training so we go over handbook training and then our last paper here is a non-compete Right, like I was talking about this earlier, a non-compete agreement basically means like, hey, I'm not just gonna spend all my time and money and training you and then the next day after you're done, you're gonna leave and then be and then try and compete against me. 
right? It gives you a little bit of leeway. Um, this is a one year non-compete. So after they leave, they have one year to not compete against me. Um, I've gone back and forth whether to do this or not, but I've been instructed that it, this is probably the best, best way to do it. Um, I know from my experience of how hard I've worked and all the time and money that I put in to get up to this point that somebody isn't just going to come out and just going to leave the, leave the company and just start out as a competitor. Like we invested a lot of money into advertising, into equipment, into building a brand with clients, vendors, uh, venues. So it's definitely a, a lot harder than just one day you wake up and now like you're a big competition with uh, all the main competitors or the big guys in your area. But it's a slow and steady process. I mean, my long-term goal is to be a nationally known brand. So I hope to see, I know some people contact me on YouTube that are actually from my area. So it's going to be cool when I get to meet them in person after this whole COVID thing's over. Uh, we're going to be going to like DJ conventions. I know they have one in California, they have one in Atlantic City. So we're going to start going to those and really starting to be a part of the industry. But I really just wanted to take this time and share like where I'm at as a company and offer some value to any of you guys out there that are looking to start uh, becoming a multi-op like myself. So I hope this, this video was valuable to some of you. Um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Make sure you subscribe and uh, leave me any questions, comments down in the comments section. Uh, I'll be happy to interact with everybody. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next video.